Hello and welcome to my channel and welcome to another Discord only vlog. Now this time I am doing an author specific thing. Now you may have seen in previous vlogs I've either gone for like a retelling or a theme or something like that. This time it is author specific. So Stephen Graham Jones has written as far as I'm aware three specifically horror books. Um, we have The Only Good Indians, The Final Last Girl and we have My Heart is a Chainsaw. And I will be basically reading those three for as long as it takes me to read them and then kind of giving you my thoughts on this author, their writing style and what I generally thought of the books. Now I will be doing The Only Good Indians and uh, The Last Final Girl as audiobooks and I will be doing the My Heart is a Chainsaw as a paperback just as a kind of like an FYI moving into this and I will be starting with this final girl or the last final girl. I will say that I do really enjoy the final girl um trope i really do enjoy the final girl trope but <laughs> the last final girl books that i tried to read specifically for a gothtober vlog were shit i ended up reading the final girl support group by grady hendrix that i thought was fine but incredibly sexist considering it was trying to be this like really pro-feminist thing and it just didn't pan out that way there was another one which is they all die at the end or Good Girls Die Young or something like that by Cynthia Hand that I found really boring and another one that was just so YA I DNF'd it after like two chapters so it was not a good time um but I am a massive fan of horror films and those kind of horror tropes in books as well so I'm hoping because Gothtober's theme this year is going to be Final Girls I want to be able to have Final Girl books that I can recommend and authors that do good gothic tropes in modern horror really well so that is kind of what this is this is me doing my research before we don't even know what the prompts are yet for gothtober yet so it's not like i'm spoiling any of that but just kind of the general theme is going to be final girl and kind of gleaning a little bit of research from these books and specifically this author yeah i'm excited i'm nervous but i'm excited so i hope you enjoy this vlog um and let me know in the comments down below if you have read any stephen graham jones books and if so what did you think of them because i'm yeah I'm really excited to see what I think. But anyway, I'm going to go and start reading. Um, I also need to <laughs> declutter my room. So that'll be the first thing I do when I start listening to the audiobook is I'll be decluttering my room because I like that. I like that as a vibe and it's quite a nice sunny day anyway. So I will see you in a bit. Okay, so last night I finished uh, The Last Final Girl and now I'd done it as an audiobook and that was really bizarre because The Last Final Girl was written like a script, like a screenplay. So I think I would have got more out of it if I had read it properly rather, or not properly, like read it in paperback rather than done it by audiobook because every time it goes switch to POV as a reader, that is something you will inherently take into your own brain as opposed to when it's kind of read out to you. It was just, it was just really, it was a really bizarre experience because it's not read like a screenplay is supposed to be read, where those things are kind of either inferred or it's like from a cast or whatever. But I did like it. Um, in the way that it did that I thought it was really interesting and I love um, books when they're written like screenplays one because I move through them a lot quicker and two because it's just you can see what it's trying to do and that book is so meta like it really pokes fun at every slasher trope but specifically the last final girls like the final girls trope thing thought that was really interesting I gave it three stars because it was incredibly tropey and that is like the balance you have to find with a meta book is it has to be meta in a way that you you like sorry the cat is just you right there bud he's not interested in being observed or spoken to he also doesn't understand why i'm in my room because usually he has my whole room to himself anyway the next one i'm going to pick up is my heart as a chainsaw which i'll be reading both as a paperback but script also has the audiobook so i'll be able to move through it a bit quicker which is great because i was worried that i was very behind on these discord only vlogs and i might be able to catch up because the other book that i'm doing which is The Only Good Indians, I also have as an audiobook. So I should be able to get those done. And this might be just a really quick, cute weekend vlog. Who knows? But I have live streams. I have two live streams today. I have one in a couple of hours, which is the Skullduggery read-along, where we are talking about Grimoire, which is the second to last book in the series. And kind of like a spin-off. Like, it's a whole thing. If you haven't read um, Skullduggery, do it. It's a great series. And then this evening, I am doing all the World's a Page sprints, with Olivia from Olivia's Catastrophe and a couple of others that's hosted on her channel um, and I will probably be reading this um, or I have started a couple of paperbacks so I could read some paperback type stuff 
but we'll see. But then tomorrow I also have live streams because I also have the Babies and Books live stream in the evening where we'll be talking about the books that we read for the Negroni prompt, which is out of our comfort zone. So yeah, I'm going to go and chill out for a bit, read, and then when I'm about 100 pages into this, I will catch up with you on my thoughts. <laughs> pages into my heart as a chainsaw i would say that this is probably as meta if not more meta than um the last final girl but for very different reasons this is about a young girl called jade who is obsessed with slasher films everything in her life is related to slasher films and she is dealing with a whole bunch of different traumas through slasher films um and on the back it describes it as a scathing indictment as to the way indigenous people are treated absolutely I would say that I kind of wish I'd known this going in because it's it's not a massive trigger for me, but it's definitely something to be wary of. There is definite suicide ideation and self-harm um, stuff in this. So if you're triggered by any of that, be warned. But as a actual horror, it's really interesting because there are loads of really sinister moments. The way she talks about thrillers and like slashes and all that kind of stuff is really interesting. But she is obsessive. And I kind of feel like this is going to be her villain origin story. And I don't get to read enough of those. So I'm going to leave this here and crack on reading because I'm really enjoying it. Okay, I have 100 pages left of My Heart as a Chainsaw and I thought I would kind of wrap up briefly for you now my thoughts so that I don't spoil the ending because I don't know what it is. Um... I think it's really interesting when you read a book by an author who clearly fucking loves their genre, right? Because there will be so many things in there that unless you're really attuned to the genre yourself, you might miss. And what I find really fascinating about this one, especially reading it after The Last Final Girl, is The Last Final Girl doesn't hide being meta, right? The whole time it feels like a script, it's actively trying to convince you that the Final Girl tropes work in certain ways. This one, it is such an interesting balance between psychological and thrasher that it, it kind of, it plays on all those tropes that are mentioned in The Last Final Girl, but in this really obsessive fangirl kind of way. So basically the main plot is that this girl, Jade, is obsessed with slasher, slasher films, <laughs> slasher films, very different vibe, um, is obsessed with slasher films to the point that it, it like it is a, it is obsessive and it's really kind of scary the lengths she's going to kind of prove that slashes exist and that she is currently in one and she is pursuing this particular slasher um, that she's not entirely sure who the slash is going to be. She thinks it's based on a certain thing, but she's too busy kind of working out who the slasher might be behind the mask to really evaluate who the mask is and whether there is actually something she needs to be chasing. There are themes of sexual assault and abuse because people think that because she's so obsessive about this behaviour, it must be as a ploy to avoid a hidden trauma, right? And it's really interesting to kind of see the difference between the very rational, logical argument versus what she's going through um, and she flat out denies it and there's loads of stuff about how she's like no I am just this way um, so it, it's just really fascinating I have no idea how this is going to end for the majority of the book I was like this is going to be all in her head right like this is going to be but now that I'm 100 pages in I'm like no she's going to have her own final girl moment because the whole time she's been setting up this other character to have a final girl moment and I'm like but if she's not the final girl, what does that make her? She's either villain or victim, right? So it's really interesting. And I really 
because I get to enjoy it in fantasy quite a lot, right? Where fantasy authors enjoy reading fantasy books. You can see that when they kind of play off each other's tropes or hype each other's books within their stuff or reference things. I haven't seen it in horror before because I feel like horrors aren't, they're so stuck in their ways of what they want to create horror wise. Or maybe I just haven't read enough horror. Like I think because I read a lot of gothic, it is very tropey, but it's tropes that I enjoy. So I don't know. I don't know. But I'm really enjoying this. I think it's going to be a four stars because just general enjoyment um, has like, yeah, I don't know if there's anything I could fault about it. It just doesn't feel like a five stars to me, but I would absolutely recommend it if you enjoyed The Murder of Graham Catton. And then once I have finished this one, I will be moving swiftly on to The Only Good Indians, which I believe was like the debut to booktube that Stephen Graham Jones had. So I'm really excited for that one because that one's going to be a completely different vibe. That one is all about like animal massacres and like very, very indigenous stuff. So I'm I'm intrigued, but I'm hoping it's going to be darker than this one. This one felt very YA and that's probably the reason why it isn't a full five stars. Um, but would definitely recommend go and read this if you haven't and you love horror. You will love this because it just, it knows what it's doing. And I just love that. Okay, I am halfway through The Only Good Indians and I believe the last time I caught up with you, I was just finishing My Heart as a Chainsaw and preparing to read The Only Good Indians as an audiobook. And I was really nervous about going in and I really shouldn't have left it till last because I knew that it was everyone's favourite and it just isn't my favourite. I think it's incredibly clever. I think the writing style is like, it's so on point. It's so creepy. But like I said, I'm halfway through and if you've read the book, you know that there is like a really dramatic thing that happens halfway through the book and basically the premise of this book is that a group of men killed a group of elk or a herd of elk 10 years ago and now something has come back to wreak its revenge and the way that's done is so like supernatural meets psycho psychological that i kind of love it but there is a thing like i said i'm now halfway through and the the very dramatic thing that i thought was going to happen has happened and that just kind of like where is this going now like what is it like i don't know like there's a whole thing so i'm really intrigued to see if that was like just the halfway point what the super super dramatic thing at the end is gonna be i'm really excited and i will be genuinely very surprised if this doesn't come out as like a four or a five stars like i said i preferred my heart as a chainsaw just for like the writing style of it and maybe just because i don't really care about a male's protagonist dealing with his own shitty behavior or being confronted with his own shitty behavior like that just doesn't hit the same as a young girl who has been assaulted left right and center and has not had the greatest start just kicking ass and killing things i don't know maybe it's maybe it's just me and who i am as a person and what i like in a horror but I have to admit, I think Stephen Graham Jones is going to become an auto by author, auto by author for me. Um, just because I really enjoy just how well he knows his genre. And it's a good time. It's a good time. So I'm going to go, I've got about two and a half hours left of my audiobook. I'm going to go finish it and then I will wrap up the three books with what my favourites were, what it was I liked about them and yeah just generally wrap up this vlog so i will see you in a bit okay so kind of the worst thing happened where i was recording my entire vlog on my phone and then my phone decided to die and i don't mean like the battery died i mean half the screen is too bright for me to see anything and the other half the screen is too dark for me to see anything so i don't really have a phone anymore and that means that this vlog kind of came to a very abrupt end where I don't remember <laughs> at what point I stopped recording or whether I managed to wrap up the books. So I'm going to do that here and anything else that I may have overwritten, I can just delete. So this is the end of the vlog, <laughs> this is it. Um, and if you're wondering what this is, there is an announcement video that is either out or coming out as this video goes up and that's why. Anyway, basically I read The Last Final Girl first, it was very meta i can see what they were doing it is not where i would recommend starting with stephen graham jones i would however start with my heart as a chainsaw which i read second really really enjoyed that one it is a classic slasher it's a really good time and if you're just looking for some hearty horror that is the one i would recommend um and then finally i read the only good indians which is the one that actually of the three is the one that i think about the most it really does look at racism internalized misogyny and kind of like toxic masculinity 
etc. So all those kinds of things are kind of mixed in with what is also a fucking terrifying ghost story. And it was just really cleverly crafted. Stephen Graham Jones has immediately become an auto buy author for me. And I will be getting, I can't remember, it's something something mannequins, um, which is his most recent one available in the UK. I know that he has a collection of other books that are available out in the US, which I haven't got my hands on yet, but I plan on doing so. So if you know of another horror writer, very similar to Stephen Graham Jones, that has that kind of um, cultural relevance, topical relevance, and good time slasher mix that is not Stephen King, because I still think he's trash, please let me know in the comments down below. And if you're watching this as a member of Discord, and therefore not watching it 100 years later as a common civvy, let me know what books you would like me to read next for a vlog, as and when I have the capacity to do so, which I'm hoping is soon. I hope, I'm hoping I get a new phone soon. Fingers crossed for me. And other than that, I hope you're having a nice day.